Welcome to the Ultimate Life Television Program, brought to you by Pastor Gracia Selassie Awie of Treasure House ICGC, where you are treasured and not trashed. Welcome to the Ultimate Life Broadcast. I'm your host, Gracia Selassie Awie, Pastor of Treasure House ICGC. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's life above the ordinary. It's called the ultimate life. On this program, you are presented with the blueprint for the ultimate life. So expect to be changed, expect to grow, expect the ultimate life. We are continuing with our series on uh, the home that God desires. This word is going to bless you, it's going to help you and equip you to build a home and family that God desires for you. Let's get into the word. Renee. Uh, Zellweger and Kenny Chesney, four months. Drew Barrymore and Tom Green, six months. Kim Kardashian and Chris Humphreys, 72, 72 days. So we go from years of marriage to months of marriage to days of marriage. And there is a massive attack. And if you don't take a stand and realize you are a frog in the water, you will never create the home that pleases God. We have to work against these things. We have to we have to watch television programs and go, this is not good. I shouldn't actually be laughing at this. This is not funny. Jesus wants to guide us in our home improvement. You know, Jesus was never married, but he was always in people's homes making a difference. And he wants to come into your home. Jesus was always in people's homes guiding them. The first time he entered the home, and did a miracle was in Canaan in Galilee, where he turned water into wine. He was showing that when marriages run into trouble, he can bring back joy. He can bring back passion. Wine is a symbol of passion. Read it in the book of Proverbs. It's a picture of sex. And what he's saying is, when you think human marriage runs out and there's no more joy, look to me, I'll multiply it. He went into the home of a businessman called Zacchaeus and he changed his values. He went into the house of a man who had palsy and he healed him. Jesus wants to heal the home. He wants to transform the values in the home. He wants to multiply resources in the home. He healed Peter's mother-in-law. He went into Matthew's house. He spent time in people's homes where he celebrated Passover in someone's house, showing that worship shouldn't just take place in church shouldn't just take place in church buildings but also in a home we've got to bring it into our family life he he was worshipped when he went into the home of mary and martha they poured they poured ointment on his feet showing that jesus needs to be honored in the home and so jesus wants to be part of the home and the main way he wants to be part of the home is his teaching needs to be the thing we teach if you don't teach the word of God to, to, to our children or to our family members, the media will teach them. And it's, a, and, and it's scary what the media is teaching. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. If the home of the marriage crashes, someone didn't do what the word said. We need to live the word of God instead of living by feelings. Feelings come and feelings go. We made commitments when we married and we need to honor them. And when we honor them in obedience, joy comes, happiness comes. It's not, it's, it's not enduring until Jesus comes. It's enjoying until Jesus comes. We've got to obey the word of God. We've got to have Jesus guiding us. And when he does, and when we obey, joy comes. 
Next point, our future depends on what kind of homes we have. Happy nation comes from happy homes. Politicians do their best, not all of them. They have grandeur ideas, rooting out corruption. Do you know where corruption, corruption starts? Do you know where corruption starts? At home. When, when you hear your dad on the phone or your mom tells you, when the phone rings, tell your auntie, I'm not here. That's where corruption starts. It doesn't start when you are 42 years old and now you must suddenly start uh, not taking bribes. No, you've grown up in that soil of lies and deceit and double-mindedness and, and double tongue. The home is the place where you teach honesty and integrity. The home is the place where Christianity is expressed in a proper fashion so our children don't become rebellious. Sometimes we can be super spiritual. We can be too intense, too legalistic, out of fear, and then we make them rebellious. Sometimes they are just rebellious on their own and we have challenges and if you've got a rebellious child you need to trust god you need to just keep loving him just like the prodigal because if god could have a prodigal don't feel bad about you having a prodigal raising a family is tough our future depends on what kind of homes we have we worry about the future we worry about uh, terrorism, impact of the pandemic, the impact of Brexit, the list goes on. We should rather be concerned about the family because the more families break down, the less chance we've got. Where do you think all this youth violence is coming from? You can trace it all back to the family. If we want to secure our future, listen to what Pope John Paul said. The future of the church and the future of humanity depends in great part on parents and the family life they build in their homes the family is the true measure of the greatness of a nation you might think that your family is dysfunctional and you keep talking about it as if everyone else's is functional there is no family that is fully functional the only family that was functional was adam and eve and it didn't last long. Every family has got measures of dysfunction. The quicker we start realizing that and not feeling bad about that and trying to give up on our family, the greater our future will be. The future is dependent on our family. The next point is that home is not dependent on things but on values. So many people are working so hard, slaving away to make their homes, their pictures that they see in the magazines. I want one of those tables and the wooden floors. So we work, we buy all the beautiful stuff, but there's strife and we are in debt and there's unhappiness and there's arguing. Why? Because we want to dress the part and, and, and the home that God desires is not about our lives with each other, but about how we look to the world. And, and we miss the boat. We need to improve. We need to have excellence. But some of you need to wait. There are some things you need to wait. You don't have to have it now. Greg Rochelle has written a book called Weird. In the book, he talks about two families that are friends of his. And he describes them and he says this. The one family, you go up their driveway and it's awesome is this beautiful mansion you look to the right they have a four car garage and in it there is the convertible the suv the boat and the jet skis there's no junk in that garage because these people can afford to throw everything away you walk inside and there's this double volume there's a beautiful uh chandelier he goes uh or, or, or up goes the staircase the floors are made of uh, Traventine. The kitchen is bigger than some people's lounge. Granite counters. There is the sinks, the, the purifier. Everything is in its place. All the cutleries, gleaning, 
there is no uh there's not a speck of dead you go to the lounge there is this beautiful lovely carpet there 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 is the biggest flat screen tv the latest one you've ever seen but there's tension in the house you can feel it there is glances between husband and wife the kids don't feel love they are rebellious the whole air wrecks with tension when when he talks about another home he says you walk up the driveway and it's a mess as you get near the front door the grass is long there are toys lying everywhere and the grass is grown around the, the toys the toys have been lying there so long you walk through the front door it, it, it's all broken and battered as you come inside you 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 know it's it's, it's dimly lit it's small uh, you walk into the kitchen it's crammed there is food everywhere the counters are genuine uh, formica then they are cracked you go into the lounge the furniture is worn through on the arms there is uh, dog hair everywhere and as you glance into the corner there's this old big bubble 36 inch tv if you glance outside to the garage they've got only or they, they've only got one it's packed with junk because people like this keep everything one car is stuck into uh it like a tunnel it's got thousands of kilometers on it the other one is parked outside rusting but if you walk in there you feel love you feel acceptance you feel a welcome it's a real home and a heaven you you can you can see the husband and wife and children love each other and feel accepted it's not a place of perfection anyone who comes there at any time is welcome in with open arms in fact the door is always unlocked what kind of home do you have what kind of family do you have what are you striving to achieve listen you can live with less that will demolish or dissolve your family life quick be careful a home is not dependent on things but on values next point small changes can make a big difference never say that small things don't make a difference you know when you sell a house the estate agent comes and looks around they normally say it's a really nice house you just need to pack these things away i suggest you paint this wall change the carpet on the staircase it won't cost you that much get rid of those old magazines because if if you are a family person you don't even notice it one of the children is left a toy in the fish tank just just hover the house a little bit then they, they will tell you to spray the house with fragrance because the smell is in the carpet because when people walk in there their first impression they'll buy the house there are many people who have done that they go out and come back and they go no i'm not going to sell the house i'm in love with the house again you make small changes to the home and family life you you fall in love again don't say it won't make a difference now let me give you some of them 10 small changes guaranteed to improve your 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 home in one week the first one is touch each other five times some of you are like what let me give you a scripture jesus touched people constantly when he healed them john chapter 13 verse 23 one of them the disciple whom jesus loved was reclining next to him do you know what uh husband and wives do they don't touch each other in days and then in the dead of the night they are looking for each other in bed touch each other five times a day just think about it when last did you touch your spouse your mother and father and your children when they are small you go come get in the car when they are bigger hurry up put your uh bag in the back get in put the seat belt on I'm late. Get out. Run. The bell. The bell is rung. Go. You haven't touched them. Do you know families about touching? 
That is why we say in church, touch someone, greet someone, contact, 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 contact is what you are designed for. Some people touch their pets more than their spouse. Dr. Bill Graham said, Dog, dogs are quick to show their affection. They never pout. They never bear grudge. They never run away from home when mistreated. They never complain about their food. They never gripe about the way the house is kept. They are always chivalrous and courageous, ready to protect their mistress at the risk of their lives. They love children. And no matter how noisy and boisterous they are, the dog loves every minute of it. In fact, the dog is still competition for a husband. Perhaps if we husbands imitated a few of our dog or dog's virtues, life with our family might be more amiable. Next point, smile and laugh more. Be happy. You say, I can't. I'm married to a dog. No, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. In other words, what Paul is saying in Philippians chapter 4 is be happy. It's a decision. You wake up in the morning and this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You need to make a decision to smile and laugh more. Proverbs 15 verse 13. A happy heart makes the face cheerful but heartache crushes the spirit and there are people living in homes where they are crushed next point put a lid on future debt if you are drowning put a lid on future debt if you are uh, if you are drowning there is no quicker way to kill joy than to get into debt you don't need that item if it's going to kill your joy, it's not worth it. You, you, you can do without things, but the, but the joy in a marriage, you've got to guard it. Most of the fights in marriage today are over finance. The stress that comes because you don't have enough money. You've got too much. You've got too much months at the end of your money. And you can stop it by canceling some debt. Next point. Make love and respect your daily goals. The Bible says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. In other words, be gentle and tender with her. Treat her well. Talk to her nicely. Be kind to her. Touch her face. Go in the kitchen and hug her. Let her know she's loved and valued. It says about wives, respect your husband. Men need to be respected. When the children come to you, don't say, go, 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 go and ask that too known father of yours. He knows everything. Don't talk like that. That is respectful. Say, go and ask your dad. He knows a lot of stuff. I'm sure you have the answer to that. That's respect. The father feels on it. Make love and, res make love and respect values every day that you wake up. Make love and respect values every day that you wake up. Be good and kind in the home and tender toward uh, one another. There's an Arabian proverb that says, if there's any good in you, it should show itself first in your own household. Sometimes people come to church and they show you goodness. No, you need to do it at home. The next point is, guard the atmosphere atmosphere is important sometimes the atmosphere you go into in homes you can cut them with a knife husband and wife are at war it's like a smell when you go into a house and it stinks it's terrible guard the atmosphere don't get used to a stinky atmosphere the best way to cure a smell is to go away for a week and then come back when you open the door you can smell the odors in the carpet but when you live there you get used to it it's like a marriage you get used to bad attitudes you need to change the atmosphere bring joy bring life a nice smell bring a nice smell into your home next point let go of yesterday's heads and annoyances 
let go of yesterday's hurts and annoyances you get hurt every day if you are married to anybody it's a decision it's not a feeling and you mustn't leave or you mustn't leave it because it's like rising damp it rots the walls it rots the walls eventually you have to break the whole wall down and a lot of people keep records of wrongs and they bring them up when when you thought they've been dealt with it's all stored up in the hard drive you've got to let go every day do not let the sun go down on your anger it says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 don't keep a record and annoyances forgive your children for accidents accidents do happen plates get dropped things get spilled they don't intentionally do it create a home where there is happiness next point have sex more often some people can't believe i actually said that it's a small thing but it can have a big result the next day why did you get married if you don't have sex did you want somebody to stay in the house with you married for intimacy people get married they have children they buy a house they've got their careers and it's like that part is packed away in a storeroom some people's frustration in marriage is because there is not enough sex some of you need to go for a week non-stop i'm giving you antibiotics to cure everything make your family sorry to go out and happy to come home is the next point make your family sorry to go out and happy to come home how do you make your family sorry to go to work and school and happy to come home you build a family life where there's community there is love there is support there is no negativity and criticism you eat together at least three times a week you might be thinking what listen you might be saying that can never happen in our home you need to change that next point compliment each other once a day find something nice talk about victories talk about good things don't bring gossip home and talk about colleagues at work and your boss and family members when when you bring all that home it's like vomiting on the table and you want to have a happy home no don't bring your dregs home bring your best home leave that stuff outside bring a blessing bring a good smell next point pray with each other and for each other because the family that prays together stays together and when you pray for each other you pray for change in each other and and you, you you'll be amazed how god can change people's hearts the bible says in first samuel chapter 10 that god changed saul's heart and we need a we need a heart change psalm 127 verse 1 it's a popular scripture we know it says unless the lord builds the house the builders labor in vain unless the lord watches over the city the guards stand watch in vain i trust that this series has helped you it's it's um empowered you and it's going to help you make some changes where um changes need to be made you are going to assess your home you are going to assess your family you're going to assess the way uh, look at how you parent before i bring this uh, broadcast to a close i'm going to ask you a very important question have you handed over ownership of your life to christ if you haven't done that i want to encourage you to do that i said earlier on in this series that jesus never got married or jesus was never married but he went to homes and when he went to homes he made a difference he helped them you know your life is like your house or like 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 your like your home like your house jesus wants to come and dwell in the house with you he wants to help you he wants to help you navigate the troubled waters of life so i want to encourage you to give your life to him i'm going to pray a simple prayer with you it's your prayer i'm going to give you the words you are the heart to it say this after me father today i recognize that i'm a sinner who needs a savior jesus forgive me of all my sins have mercy on me i believe with all my heart that you died for me and you rose again and with my mouth i confess your lordship over my life change me 
make me your own. Help me live for you all the days of my life and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray this simple prayer, I know you are born again, you are saved, you are now a child of God. Welcome to God's kingdom, God's family. Heaven is rejoicing because of you and God is going to help you live a victorious and a triumphant Christian life. And uh, I'm so I'm so glad you tuned into this broadcast and, and um, I, I trust that you've been blessed, you've been helped by this message and I look forward to coming your way next time. But before I sign up, I want you to know that if you want to, if you want a life that is going to be as abundant as possible without chaos and confusion, don't do it any other way. Live it by God's word. God bless you and have a great day. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Life Television program. We hope you have been blessed by the teaching. Tune in to our next program on the same channel and the same time next week. You are cordially invited to visit Treasure House ICGC for our Sunday morning church services at the New Horizon Center, South Lodge Avenue, adjacent to the Pollard's Hill Library, CR41LT. For ministry products and other information, please contact us on 0208-355-3461 or send an email to pastor at treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. You may also visit our website www.treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. Our service times are as follows, Sunday 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and Wednesday 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. You can also download our ministry app, Gracious Awaye, to listen to Pastor Gray's messages from the Apple Store or Google Play Store. May God richly bless you.